Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to St. Henry Catholic Church in Gresham, Oregon. My name is Father Charles Sock. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Cyril of Alexandria, a bishop and doctor of the church in Alexandria in the East, and uh, he was noted as being the protagonist in the Council of Ephesus, protecting the divinity of Jesus Christ. Our opening song will be taken from the gospel, and we all remember it from our youth, especially our first communion song we may have learned. Oh Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come to me, but speak the word of comfort, my spirit heal shall be, and humbly I'll receive thee, the bridegroom of my soul. No more my sin to grieve thee, or fly thy sweet In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Spirit, may the grace and favor of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you, Spirit. As we gather this morning, we call to mind that very first communion. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. That's our very gospel today. The words of the centurion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the Bishop St. Cyril of Alexandria, an invincible champion of divine motherhood of the most blessed Virgin Mary. Grant, we pray, that we who believe she is truly the mother of God may be saved through the incarnation of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwellings of Jacob. He has torn down in his anger the fortresses of daughter Judah. He has brought to the ground in dishonor her king and her princes. On the ground is silent sit the old men of the daughter Zion. They strewn dust on their heads and gird themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. Worn out from weeping are my eyes. Within me all is in ferment. My gall is poured out on the ground because the downfall of the daughter of my people. A chi as child and infant fade away, in open spaces of the town. In vain they ask their mothers, where is the grain? As they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the city and breathe their last in their mother's arms. To what can I liken or compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What sample can I show you of, for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for you false, spacious visions. They did not lay bare your guilt to avert your fate. They beheld for you in vision and false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, moan, O daughter Zion, 
Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Let there be no respite for you, no repose for your eyes. Rise up, shrill in the night, at the beginning of each watch. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the lives of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O oh God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your flock which you built up of old, the tribe you redeemed as your inheritance, Mount Zion, where you took up your abode. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Turn your steps toward the utter ruins, toward all the damage the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They are like men coming up from axis to the clump of trees. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. With chisel and hammer, they hack at all the paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire. The place where your name abides, they have razzed and profaned. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Look to your covenant, for the hiding place in the land and the plains are full of violence. May the humble not retire in confusion. May the afflicted and the poor praise your name. Lord, Lord forget not the souls of your poor ones. Alleluia. centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, you may go. As you have believed, let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant was healed. The Gospel of the Lord.
among our first prayers, we learned from our catechists as we prepared for First Communion. The prayer the centurion said, and we repeat it every day at Mass since then. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. When Jesus heard that from a centurion, a Gentile, he was amazed. He has not seen such faith in all of Israel. If Jesus is amazed, that's why it is we repeat it every day at Mass, that we can have the heart of the centurion. He wanted his servant to be healed. He was suffering terribly of paralysis. The three parts to his conversation with Jesus. Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. When we say it, we admit that our heart isn't always perfect. We admit that sometimes we even push Jesus out of our life. And we admit what a relief it is that Jesus will still come into the messiness of our life. Lord, I am not worthy. And then because we believe like the centurion, we say, but only say the word. Only say the word, for your word brings life. That's an important part that we ask the Lord Jesus. Already setting things right in our life when we just ask. And then the third part of the centurion's prayer, and my soul will be healed. I believe your mercy and kindness will not only make a difference in our, my life, but it will get away of all those things, get rid of all the stuff that keep me from welcoming you into this day and into our life. So let's pray together, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us stand and make these petitions to our Heavenly Father. May we have the heart of the centurion, and when we recite these words, take them to heart, for the word will set us free. We pray to the Lord. Lord we have four children receiving their First Communion this evening at the 5 o'clock Vigil Mass. They will say for the first time when they receive, Lord, I am not worthy. May they remember what a great beginning in this life that they have to share in the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And we pause a moment. Let's each add in the silence of our heart our own personal petitions, and that special person we would like to pray for. We make all of these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, this will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with 
favor, O Lord, we pray on the offerings that we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of blessed Cyril of Alexandria, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Cyril you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, and Peter, our bishops, with all the clergy and your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Cyril of Alexandria and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now stand and pray together the very words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us share a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe, Virgin Mary. May the blood of Christ keep me safe. Almighty Father, you are lavish in bestowing all your gifts, and we give you thanks for the favors you have given to us. In your goodness, you have favored us and kept us safe in the past. We ask that you continue to protect us and to shelter us in the shadow of your wings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of Blessed Cyril of Alexandria, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Eternal Holy Spirit, unworthy though I be, prepare me to receive. Trust the word to me. Increase my faith, dear Jesus, in thy real presence here, and make me. 